All right, we've covered the traditional toxic metals. Now, let's talk about calcium. In the beginning of this presentation, I mentioned that under certain circumstances, calcium can become a toxic metal. Let's discuss exactly how this happens. Unlike the previous metals we have discussed, calcium is not toxic by virtue of what it is, but rather because of where it can go. In a healthy body, 99% of the calcium is found in the bones and teeth. Unfortunately, as we age, our bones and teeth lose this calcium, becoming weak and brittle. This process is known as osteoporosis and tooth decay. But did you ever wonder where all this lost calcium goes? It goes into the internal organs. The most commonly known example of this toxic displaced calcium is the formation of kidney stones. Annually, nearly 3 million visits to the doctor and 600,000 visits to the emergency room in the United States are due to kidney stones. As anyone who's ever had one can tell you, Passing a kidney stone can be one of the most painful experiences of a person's life. Even if calcium in the kidney doesn't form stones, it can decrease the filtering ability of the kidneys, which increases toxins in your bloodstream. Another commonly known example of calcification is gallstones. Symptomatic gallstones account for more than 600,000 hospitalizations, and more than 500,000 operations each year in the United States. Most people who have gallstones, however, never know it. Even small gallstones that do not produce the kind of obvious symptoms that make one seek medical attention can cause problems. Gallstones can block the excretions of bile from the gallbladder into the intestines. This can cause constipation, poor digestion and absorption, and a buildup of toxins in the liver and bloodstream. Well, that takes care of the two commonly known results of calcification. Now let's look at some of the less known results of calcification in the body. Calcium also accumulates in the muscles as we age. This causes tightness in the muscles and in the extreme leads to a condition known as fibromyalgia. If you feel the muscles of a small child, you will see that they are soft and pliable. As we age, however, our muscles become tenser and filled with knots. This is the calcification process at work. Calcium can also deposit in the arteries. This process is called arteriosclerosis and atherosclerosis. When the calcium deposits up along the entire length of an artery, it can cause poor blood flow and high blood pressure. When it builds up in one spot in particular, it can cause a heart attack or a stroke. Every day, calcium accumulates not only in the large arteries in the heart and major organs, but also in the tiny capillaries as well. These tiny blood vessels are so small that blood cells have to pass by single file in order to travel through them. Even a little calcification in these vessels is enough to stop blood cells from flowing through them. While a blockage of one or two of these tiny vessels is of no great concern, over time the cumulative effect can be catastrophic. As organs lose blood flow in what amounts to thousands of little local heart attacks a day, a person's health and vitality are compromised. Another place calcium accumulates is in the brain. The technical term for this is acervuli, but it is more commonly referred to as brain sand. This gradual calcification of the brain is partly responsible for the loss in mental function as we age. Calcium also accumulates in the eyes, the breasts, and the prostate. In fact, the only place that calcium doesn't seem to accumulate as we age is in the bones and teeth where it belongs. The average man and woman lose 1% of their bone mass per year, starting at age 35, until by age 70, 30 to 40 percent of the bone mass is gone. And where did it go? Into our internal organs. This gradual calcification is, however, not inevitable. The same process that we can use to remove toxic metals, such as mercury and lead, can also be used to pull this toxic calcium from our bodies. In fact, this process will not only remove toxic calcium, 
but it can actually put it back into the bones and teeth where it belongs. So, how can all this be done? It can be done with a process called chelation. Chelation uses a synthetic amino acid called EDTA to go in and bind to these toxic metals and misplaced calcium and physically pull them out of the body. The EDTA molecule has a very strong affinity for these metals and when introduced into the body it attaches to these toxins. Once attached to EDTA these toxins are made water soluble and they wash right out of the body. Another way to think about it is to think of a greasy dish. All the hot water in the world won't remove all the grease but add a little bit of soap and that does the trick. This is because soap is what makes grease water soluble. Add the soap and the grease washes right off. It's the same for EDTA and toxic metals. Add a little bit of EDTA and the toxic metals wash right out. Nearly 10 million treatments of EDTA chelation have been prescribed over the last 50 years. In that time EDTA has proven its safety and efficacy. EDTA is currently on the FDA's GRAS list. This acronym stands for Generally Recognized as Safe and is the seal of approval given to ingredients that have shown to be safe for daily use. EDTA has traditionally been given as a three-hour intravenous drip. This is because EDTA is a protein and if taken orally it will be digested and altered by the stomach acids and digestive enzymes. Chelation by IV is a time-consuming, expensive, and invasive procedure. Fortunately, there is another way to get EDTA into the body, and that is by suppository. This method has been used for nearly 20 years and is considered to be just as effective as intravenous administration. Chelation by suppository is safe, convenient, and very effective. Magnesium dipotassium EDTA suppositories are now available without a prescription. If you're concerned about your level of toxic metal exposure and body calcification, contact the healthcare provider who gave you this CD. Remember, we live in a toxic world but with chelation, we don't have to live in a toxic body.